Appamada's programmes and facilities are supported through your generosity. Your support really does make a huge difference. You'll find a link for contributions on the website at appamada.org forward slash contribute. Thank you so much. Vast as the robe of liberation, a formless field of benefaction, wearing the universal teaching, I realize the one true nature, thus harmonizing all being. Vast is the robe of liberation, a formless field of benefaction, wearing the universal teaching, I realize the one true nature, thus harmonizing all being. Vast is the robe of liberation, a formless field of benefaction, wearing the universal teaching, I realize the one true nature, thus harmonizing all being. Okay, well, hello everyone. Happy Saturday. Sun Sunday? Sunday. Yes, I know what day of the week it is. I'm getting my, my communities mixed up. How's everyone doing? We've got a good group today. Does anyone have any burning questions as I often position it before we begin? Anything that would prevent them from uh, beginning the period with some silent practice? I would just like to speak if that's sure. okay. Because I um I've not been here for quite a long time, so it just feels like I want to speak into the room, into the space. Uh, because it's probably mm, September was the last time I was here. I finished my face. And then life sort of took over. And so I just found it really um hard to get going again to because I was really anxious about cutting my frame so, you know measuring and cutting my frame so it was so easy to just put it to one side um and so I'm feeling really um appreciative of the fact that I've moved through that now and I here I have one cut and marked frame hey, hey. Yeah. And I didn't give up on myself and my sanger in UK didn't give up on me encouraging me that I'd, I'd move through it when when the time was ready. So I'm really appreciative to be here today and have done that. So I'm really looking forward to sewing again. So thank you. Welcome thank back. you, John, for holding the space and all of you all this time in my absence. And I don't think we've ever met before. No, I don't think we have. And I don't think we have. Is it Mimo? Mino. Mino. Oh, I've got, yeah, Mino. Hi, Mino. I'm Jan from the UK. Nice to meet you. Yeah, likewise. And, and Ellen, Claire, I don't sure. think I've met you before either. No, I've, Ellen, I don't met, think I've met you. Um, yeah, I think I, I've met you. There was a period of time I was uh, busy uh, sewing uh, in North Carolina, but I'm back now. So, uh -huh. yeah. Good to meet you. Yeah, nice to see you. Mm. Glad you're back. Thank you. Yeah, we're very glad to have you, Jan. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, hi, Mino. It's lovely to meet you. Um, like Jan, I had a bit of a hiatus. Um, <laughs> so I came back last week um, and I'm hoping to be a bit more regular. All right. Mm -hmm. Any other burning questions or? Well, that wasn't a burning question. That was just a nice mm. icebreaker of sorts mm -hmm. and uh, welcoming. Do we have any burning questions? No, I think I'm okay to, I've got my instructions. So Great. I think I'm okay to start pinning and sewing. All right. And I will begin to sew as well.
John? Yes, hi, Ellen. Hey, uh, okay, I've got a question. I'm, uh, I just need to know, I never can understand how to do knots so they don't show. Mm. I'm sewing back here, showing this, sewing this bottom edge to yes, yes. the white. And so how, how, how do I, so I've got my, so how, how do you do that? You actually have two options on this one. Um, so at this point, you can still use knots. It doesn't have to be fully knotless. It's just not making it not show, as you said. So, uh, so most likely, um, so at this point, you can either do the method of having a completely non-showing or, or completely knotless approach, or you can make it so that the knot um, does not uh, show. I did the knotless approach, uh, or I showed, I demonstrated one last week, uh, and that's available in the link tree. So I think I'm actually going to demonstrate the uh, starting with a knot and just making it not visible. Okay. Knot. Lots of knots. Um, and I have moved my needle away. Okay. Hi, Riz. So I'll pretend that this corner here uh -huh. is where um, you are starting your, your stitch. Okay, but by the way, I am starting in the middle of, of a row. Okay. Just that's, FYI. Okay. That's good to know. This should work the same. Okay. Uh, either way. This does require care and tight stitching, this particular method. So I've just got my knot. I think I did four loops. So uh, a moderately sized knot, if you can see that. Uh -huh. And so what I will be doing, okay. So I'm going to come up underneath the, so as if the silk were back here, I would come up and begin by coming up out where I want to begin oh, the stitch. I see. And so I'll pull that all the way until the needle or the, the knot is there. Uh -huh. And then before continuing with the, the next, I'm going to attempt to tuck that down, uh, tuck that loose end um, underneath where the rest of the stitch will go. So. I'm using my finger here, which is cheating, but theoretically you'd have two layers of fabric in between which you could use your needle to smooth that between. Okay. And when you begin sewing, if you get it just right, if you get it just so, you will actually be able to make your, your stitch. And as you can see, actually be able to trap that loose. Oh, cool. Okay. That, that does require uh, a really strong sense of what's going on out of sight. Uh -huh. um, really, at this point, though, even if you did not trap it underneath, imagine that, that this thread was on top. Um, you would still have uh -huh. uh, all of these. Uh, this, this would prevent. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it would, it would keep things in place in its own way. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yes, glad you asked.
Um, John, could I please check something? Yes, of course. Thank you. So I've done the first half corner, stitching the frame together. Mm -hmm. And because I kind of used the um, the fold of the fabric as the line I was working against, when I hold it to the to the orientation that it will hang, it looks like the the stitches look like they're perpendicular to the folded line. Yes, that's, that's that... perfectly right. Excellent. Thank you. And we can even check that not just against my own experience, but uh, 45 degree Namuke Butsu stitch plus a 45 degree corner angle is 90 degrees. Um, the only other note while we're on the topic is they you will notice that they do alternate from corner to corner, and that is normal. So on this corner, um, it is running parallel to the long edge, mm. short edge, long edge short edge lovely so, and that's because of the alternation of whether it sort of where the fold is whether it looks like it's going over or under yes exactly right great
And we're past the half hour mark, so conversation is invited from anyone who is, feels inclined. Well, I think I'm going to have to go back to practice stitching again because it's happening again. <laughs> the stitches just aren't going right and looking right or looking all different. So I'm going to do some practice to stitching again and and then go back to the rack or so. No harm in that. None at all. Noticing my frustration. I understand that. I've probably I've probably done how do I say it? I've done three times as many stitches are as are actually <laughs> I've done three times the length now, even though I'm like, like on two inches or something this morning. Yeah. Unstitched a lot. Picking and unpicking. It, it is, it's, it's kind of making that part of the actual stitching process, isn't it? It's like picking and unpicking is actually making the rack or so. It's actually moving forward, not going backwards. Mm -hmm. It's part of it, isn't it? It's like almost reconceptualizing it as it is just all part of the process, you know, two steps forward and another step back and it's just all part of it but uh, yeah. so I, I was thinking of what john eric said this morning right recognize and refrain <laughs> yeah <laughs> Easy, easier said than done yeah recognize allow investigate yeah it is kind of like something I just don't understand. And I guess it's that it's not understanding why I can do the other rows. And then all of a sudden I can't do it. And it's working with that, you know, being compassionate with that, that that's part of something that's going on right now. And, and it happens and then it resolves and then it happens again. And, and it resolves again, just like the practice, isn't it? <laughs> we get triggered, we sort it all out and then, here it comes again. <laughs> and, and like he said, you're being sent a device. Yeah. It's the messenger. Yeah. That's what they are. They don't feel like it at times. I but that's know, it. That's I know. Are. Our little teachers coming along to <laughs> teach us more things about, about ourselves. So last week I demonstrated two different types of knotless finishes. One uh, on my own garment, I think, um, to demonstrate the non kind of looped or reinforced version, and the other to show the reinforced version. Um, I'm about to do the non reinforced version again, if anyone wants to watch and uh, just see how that's done. This is useful primarily in um, the frame. Let me switch to a finer camera. Okay. So the basic principle of this, and I'm gonna show it both at the start and at the finish. So ignore the basting stitch that is there to hold things all in place while I do the frame. So I'm going to go in. So this, I came out at the top left. Oh, I came uh, facing towards me. It is, I'm sewing this direction and I've just come out at the top left of the stitch. I'm going to go in at the bottom right, just through the first layer and snake the needle, if possible, between as many of these stitches as possible, ideally four. 
or, or I shoot for four with the current length of needle that I'm using. And then I pull it through and snip with a little bit of tension so it disappears into the fabric. So I'll show it here. So I'm in just one layer of fabric. And I'm feeling and wiggling and making my way downtown. Sometimes I have to back up and try again because I've missed. I flip to the back to check that I don't see any steel or whatever that metal is. But I don't. So I can be confident to push that out. And you see I've got, in this case, I got, looks like five, which is a, a fine number. So I pull through. And now that entire link, oops, I caught that basting stitch under that. Last one, I don't, I want to pull it taut all the way down. Okay. So I have this, this stitch here at the very corner, the very last stitch I did is now secured by the friction of all of these that follow it. And to finish, I pull it under just a smidge of tension. So that when, when I cut that thread that was under tension, pulls the, uh, sneaks back into the fabric. So it has disappeared. Goodness, I'm having a hard time staying in the shot. But you can see that it came out around there where my thumbnail is, and it is now missing. It went inside the fabric. So I still have. I started off just by going in at the bottom right of the stitch. So when I first started this row of stitches, I just went in at the bottom right and came out at the next top left and left that loose end. And that is so I can do more or less exactly what I just did. But on this end, to secure it, Let me turn my thimble. Okay. So this is how it looks facing me, right, left. And I'm going to go in at the top, which is where ordinarily you would come out at the top in a stitch, right? And here I'm going to again just go. So I am. My needle point is here. And I am working my way through, being careful not to come out either side and do my best to kind of, as though there was a little tunnel that I'm trying to drive my car through. And I flip and I don't see any reflective metal bits. It looks like I might have missed that last one, but I know I'm pretty good through here, so I'm not going to, to sweat it. I shoot for four, and I think a minimum, I would say, is three. Okay, so I'm pulled uh, all the way through, and again, I'm going to just put a little bit of tension, just enough that when I see where it's um, where it is at rest, maybe half a mil to a millimeter of thread out, just enough that when I release that tension, it will sneak back into the fabric. You can still see it, but when I pull, there it goes. Oh, that was in shot. And that's how you do those, the unreinforced knotless finishes. The reinforced ones you use when you're attaching the, the frame to the uh, straps.
had a little bit of trouble if anyone wants to see how I just resolve a quick issue. Um, so I was, when I first basted this, I cut the uh, knots a little close to, or cut off the loose ends uh, behind the knots. And I made this one knot a little bit small. At some point, I don't remember how, that knot got pulled into the fabric. And I just tried, and I've been unable to pull it uh, back through the face. So I have a little bit of basting thread that is just going to have to get hidden. It's just going to have to get tucked away. Um, so nothing fancy, but most any time that you encounter some sort of uh, issue with a thread that shouldn't be visible where it is, you can usually find some way to hide it between layers of, of material. And it'll just be a secret between you and us, or between you and me. We all know it's there, but whoever gets gifted this Rakasu years down the road will probably never know it was that there was a problem. And certainly anyone who looks at it would never guess. And I'm using a, the butt end of a satin needle or satin pin to force it in just a little bit further.
what I've already done is I uh, was looking through my scrap fabric and I knew that I found that this one was, I pulled this edge. Uh, we have previous videos on how to pull an edge, but basically I just kept pulling these little bits that come free until I had, uh, as you can kind of see, a very a straight line. Let me see if I, I don't know if I can zoom in on this. I'll give it a try. Yeah, just no, not to move it. So this straight line, these are actually just the, I don't know if it's a lane or weft at this point, but these are just the threads that come this direction. There are no more threads that run left to right through this lighter colored area. And that's that was after pulling the thread. So we can be pretty confident that this should be a straight line of threads. And you know, at this point, kind of these little weak creases and a small piece of fabric, I'm not super concerned about. Um, but that can affect the overall straightness. Looks like it's pretty close. It's it's close and or it's but it's um the seam allowances on this, they're smaller than we've been working with. They're only 0.8 centimeters, but I think that's still enough that any uh, issues with messed up cutting will be, won't be a huge issue. So after I pulled that edge, I laid this square down on it to give me something to push the butt of this ruler up against. So I just plopped this down uh, as close as I could to what looked straight on that pulled edge. I put this down and I marked the line that you see here. And this has no measurements. This is just a, a point of a, a source of truth or a, a point of truth that I'm pretty confident that this is 90 degrees square. And that gives me the starting point to begin to um, recreate what we see here, that I can measure along this edge and this edge here to generate these uh, these numbers. And then at the end, I can even go so far as to mark, uh, when I mark this, I can go so far as to remeasure these dimensions here, just so I can be super confident that everything is, is square. On a piece this small, I probably don't need a third point of reference, as I often recommend. Uh, but you could do that for extra super duper certainty. So I will just, at this point, I'll just be probably mostly silently marking. I'm actually going to go ahead and try to keep this on the screen. I'm actually going to go ahead and use this square at this point as a square.
So I have realigned this square with our that, that source of truth corner just for the sake of marking a complete straight edge on this on my right side. I use the ruler to smooth if you saw. From here, I'm pretty confident, and it's a small piece with a small ruler, so I'm going to go ahead and just move the. Making small, a little bit lighter than usual strokes because I don't have enough hand. Uh, I'm in a weird position with the camera, so I can't use my hand to stabilize as I usually would. If you find a way that is more comfortable for you, I encourage you to do that. I can check square again by finding my corner. And I'm going to check to see if the one parallel, the top mark, the parallel to this, if it lines up naturally. So, what I should be able to do, well, we can't see the mark under this ruler. So, I'm going to square this, the butt of this ruler up. I'm going to slide it up until it matches that mark. And yeah, looks pretty square. So let me just scoot this over a smidge. Looks like maybe mm, half a mil higher on the left side. And that's OK with me. We are not making an automobile motor or an airplane motor. We're Okay, and so that's the basics of it. From here, I think it should be pretty simple for anyone with these instructions to measure that top line, measure that out, and then at that point connect the dots. Um, as a reminder, as as with previously in our instructions, the dotted line that's going to be a cut line. So each uh, you will have four squares, each with four seam allowances around it. I drew this out partially to think it out and to deliberate with uh, Anne, and I think, who was it at the time? It might have been Trudy, um, to deliberate on which was better. So this is a common way of making pocket corners. Um, we're at the hour, actually. I should probably, I'll be very brief. So this is a way of making pocket corners in traditional sewing, uh -huh. um, you're sewing a pocket onto a garment, um, whereas this is what the instructions call for. You just, oh. and so, uh, I was exploring which of these uh, is better. And uh, what the conclusion I came to was this, the, the, the instructions version can make a tighter corner if you're very careful with your pinning and your sewing. I see. So this one's less fiddly. I think that this is a good accessibility option. So if for whatever reason you have tried B, you've given it a good go and uh, You've, you've really, you know, you've done what you can, but it's just too small, too fiddly, then do A. Uh, a will work. Uh, it's perfectly fine. And it is easier on uh, the hands and the eyes. But I think give, giving B a try first is okay. the way to do it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. John, could I ask a question? Yes. I've um, sewn 
uh, my corners for my frame and I'm just about to turn them through. And um, the first corner, which obviously has the seam allowance where the fabric joins, mm -hmm. it's going to be a lot bulkier yes. because you've got that seam allowance in it. Do you trim the seam allowance or do you leave the full one centimeter? You leave the full one centimeter. So you're going to actually, um, yes, you just leave the one centimeter and you do the best you can. It will not make uh, for the neatest, uh, if you're a neat freak like I am, inside that corner, you'll yeah. just know that the material um, doesn't, isn't perfectly neat, but mm -hmm. uh, you will, you will leave it in. I think it would okay. be too hard to work with without the seam allowance and it doesn't make a, a visible bulk um, in the garment. It also will be, um, so once you've made your corners, uh, you do mark that corner, that will be your upper left corner. Uh -huh. And so, yeah, you can kind of see that there's a little bit of additional bulk there, but yeah. this whole area up until about here will have, or here, will have straps covering it. So right. you won't be able to see this whole rectangle of material under right. the straps. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. We are at our hour. Um, I'd love to, if anyone has questions, I can be happy to stay on, but I want to make sure that anyone who has a place to be uh, can get there. So can bow out. If you do have questions, I'll stay on until I'm the last person here. So good to see you all. See you again next week. Look out for an email. I'm not certain we'll be meeting March 5th, but look for an email on that. Bye. Okay. Thank you, John. Yeah, thanks yeah, very much. Thanks for being here, John.